Welcome back to the class on HVDC transmission system. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the reactive power sources in a HVDC system. In the last class, we have discussed about the why the reactive power is required in HVDC transmission system. In this lecture, we are going to see how we can generate that reactive power in a HVDC transmission system. This is the layout of the HVDC transmission system. This is the AC source. This is the bus. This is the converter. This is nothing but AC filter. Generally, we are using the AC filter to filter out the harmonics in a source current. Sometimes, this AC filter also can be supply reactive power to at a bus for the low variations in a load. SVC, nothing but a static wire compensator. The static wire compensator can supply reactive power to the bus for the large variations in a load. Synchronous condenser or statcom also. Already we know that the synchronous condenser is nothing but a over excited synchronous motor that also can be supply reactive power to the bus in HVDC system. The statcom also will be supplying a reactive power to the HVDC system during the large variations in a load. Suppose if you use the fixed capacitor at a bus means it will be supplying a reactive power in a discrete values whereas SVC and Statcom and synchronous condenser can supply a reactive power in a continuous manner. In SVC, the three devices are there only thyristor controlled reactor, thyristor switched capacitor, and FCTCR, nothing but a fixed capacitor and thyristor controlled reactor. Now, first, we are going to see the synchronous condenser. The synchronous condenser is nothing but a the over excited synchronous motor. This is the armature of synchronous motor, this is the field winding, this is the reactor, this synchronous motor is connected at a bus. Whenever the field excitation is more than the normal value, the synchronous motor will be giving a reactive power to the HVDC system at a bus. But it is a mechanical system, it has advantages as well as the disadvantages. It can supply a continuous variable reactive power to the HVDC bus due to the large variations in a load. It can also supply a commutational voltage to the inverter. If any fault is occur, the supply is come to the zero so that the commutation failure can be avoided. It will be improving the short circuit ratio of a system during the fault condition. It gives a better voltage regulation during the transient due to the magnetic flux linkages existing in a synchronous motor. But the disadvantages is that it is a mechanical system, more losses are occurs in the system, the efficiency of the system will be lesser. It requires a maintenance because it consists in the slip rings and the brushes. Now we are going to see the static wire compensator. Now the reactive power of what is required in HVDC system that we can get it by means of a power electronic devices. That's why we are, we are calling as a static wire compensator. So this is the layout. This is the point where we want to apply reactive power. This is the controller for the TCR. This is the fixed capacitor. This is the fixed capacitor along with a reactance. So by means of this controller, we are giving a process to the T1 and T2. SVC can be supply reactive power to the HVDC system during the large variations in a load like that rolling means. It can also improve the voltage at any point in a transmission system so that we can avoid the voltage instability. It also can improve the power transfer capacity of a line and control of dynamic power voltage and improve the stability of the system. Suppose if you in SVC, if you use the fixed capacitor, it will be supplying a reactive power to the line in a discrete manner. Along with the capacitor, if you use the thyristor control reactor, then it will give the continuous variable reactive power to the line. Thyristor switched capacitor not generating any harmonics in HVDC system, whereas the TCR will be injecting the harmonics in the HVDC system. Operation of a thyristor control reactor. This is the circuit diagram for the thyristor control reactor. This is T1 and T2. Both are connected anti-parallel in series with a reactance. 
across the system we are applying the voltage so to know the operation of the circuit first you have to take the voltage waveform this is the voltage waveform during the positive voltage the t1 is followed by us we are applying the degree voltage to the t1 at an angle 90 degrees so from this point the t1 is conducting it will be conducting up to this point so the current will be reaching maximum again come to the zero at this point the t1 will be off in the same instant we are applying the degree voltage to the t2 now the negative current will be passing through the reactor so in this manner the current is passing through the reactor this current is nothing but a reactive current because this current lags this voltage by 90 degrees in this case the firing angle is the 90 degrees suppose if you increase the firing angle to 110 then this is the current waveform if further increasing the firing angle the magnitude of current will be further decreases here psi is nothing but a conduction angle if alpha equal to 90 degrees the conduction angle is 180 degrees but in this case when the alpha equal to 110 degrees the conduction angle becomes a 140 degrees now we are going to find the expression for this current i equal to psi minus sin psi divided by pi into xl into v where psi is nothing but a conduction angle xl is nothing but a inductive reactance v is nothing but a applied voltage so the conduction angle psi equal to 2 into pi minus alpha now here we in the table we can observe that as the firing angle increases the conduction angle will be decreases and magnitude of current also will be decreasing from maximum value to the zero nothing but a by changing the firing angle between the 90 to 180 degrees you can change the magnitude of the reactive current continuously but it is injecting a harmonics into the system because here if you observe in this waveform here there is no current here there is no current it is not a pure sine wave that's why it will be injecting harmonics into the transmission system this is the typical control diagram for the tcr this is the reference voltage this is the bus voltage the difference in these two voltages are given here this is the reactor current this is gain this is nothing but a auxiliary control vs is nothing but a voltage which is generated based upon the variations in the frequency this is the integrator linearizer this is the gpg nothing but a gate pulse generator it is generating a pulses to the t1 and t2 this control diagram is highly depending upon the integral control this is the characteristics of svc on a vi plane the line ab is represent the control region which is a positive slope the slope we can control by means of a changing a gain in a current loop. The TCR is injecting a harmonics into the system that we can decrease by using a 12 pulse arrangement or we can use the additional AC filter to filter the fifth and seventh harmonics which are generated by the TCR. Now come to the STATCOM. STATCOM is nothing but a, it is a voltage source converter. The input of the voltage source converter is consisting of a capacitor. This is injection transformer. The voltage at this point you take it as E. The voltage at the line you have to take it as V. Suppose the E is greater than the V. Then the current is passing from the voltage source converter to the line which is representing the leading reactive power. Suppose if E is less than the V then the current is passing from the line to the voltage source converter which is representing the lagging reactive power. Sometimes to meet the losses in a voltage source converter and also to charge the capacitor, it requires the real power from the line that we can accomplish if the E voltage will be lax V by some angle. Suppose if the capacitor is overcharged, the discharging of the capacitor can be accomplished if E leads the V. In this manner, with the proper control system, by controlling the ma magnitude of E with respect to V and angle between the V and E also, we can control both real power as well as a reactive power. The STATCOM also will be used in a HVDC transmission system to supply reactive power also to observe the reactive power from the line so that it can 
maintain the voltage at any given bus in a transparent system is within the limit. So thank you very much for watching this video.